another initiative of yours uh, could you please elaborate about the world parliament experiment like how does that work what's the core philosophy and the current situation mm-hmm. yeah this is my main project uh, i started this uh, many years uh, ago already uh, and for me it's a very practical project a internet parliament everybody can join it uh, we talked before about uh, top down approaches this is certainly a bottom up approach all citizens of the world are invited to go to uh, the global voting platform um uh, they can vote on anything um on we have united nations decisions there national parliaments including the national parliament of india germany uh, united states of america uh, and so on so i think this is a, a very hands on Uh, project and in my opinion uh, it has a huge potential i have to admit it's it is still small in its uh, in its scope because most people do not even know it exists um uh, but uh, i think even in in particular if more and more people join it uh, it could have a tremendous uh, impact on international politics and that's my main project and that's what i am uh, uh, working for so will it be correct to term the world parliament experiment as a platform for referendum or plebiscite uh, some sort of parallel referendum and also how will we witness the execution of the bills passed by the members yeah it it the uh, global referenda are, could be part of it um but it depends on the initiative of uh, a, of its users uh, what the subject is are um it could be uh, anything it could be a, a petition uh, petitions or initiative similar to petitions to certain decision makers but we uh, in a certain way uh, it also Uh, it already is a virtual parliament where people can elect representatives uh, and they can lobby uh, parliamentarians if people are interested i wrote a discussion paper for a democracy without borders the title is united humans um united humans means uh, a, a, a new world organization instead of united uh, nations uh we can have a united humans organization uh in in the future and this internet world parliament can play an, a very important role uh in in this picture so i hope that also our conversation will lead some listeners uh to uh, to look up the website and simply join it because our slogan is very simple global uh, democracy is possible if you support it so every single world citizen that goes to the website and participates in the project makes this uh, stronger um, and i hope uh, that some day the majority of the world population will join a project similar to this one does not have to be uh, exactly the one we are organizing at the moment it might develop in the future but something like this um uh, in my opinion is very much needed and uh, very much possible if uh, world citizens uh, understand the opportunity uh, um, it uh, it offers sure and uh, for the convenience of our viewers we'll be attaching the link to the website in the description so you could go ahead and you could access and i would personally encourage uh, you to be a part of the portal uh, it's an amazing portal by the way thank you very much it's very much appreciated i had the opportunity to be a part of uh, the voting proceedings uh, for the unpa 2021 and i found it to be really cool so i wanted to know more about it and uh, to like spread it spread the word among other people as well and today we have the founder of the project himself uh, with us so it's great it's a great thing indeed mhm okay we have to say that uh, there are different projects uh, uh, several good projects in a similar direction for example we have model united nations projects they are also very good we support them uh, but what we are doing is uh, going one step beyond that uh, because this is not about learning how to act in existing organizations 
uh, but it's in a certain way we are trying to create a new organization. Uh, you, you could say in a certain sense, we are trying uh, to create a world federation uh, and it depends on us whether this uh, institution is created or not. Yeah, so I think um, in addition to, um, to a federation of democratic nations, it is also important that we create a federation of Democrats, of individuals, that world citizens join their forces and organize themselves. I think we live in, uh, in a unique time. For the first time in human history, um, this is possible now. And uh, it depends on us whether or not we accept that. And I'm, I'm glad to see that young people like you uh, are going in that uh, direction because uh, um, this will really help uh, our cause to be successful. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, ca carrying that forward from the previous question, uh, as you previously stated, uh, it was during the Cold War, it was during after the World War period that the movement was at its peak with famous personalities joining in and supporting the cause. Do you observe any similar impact during the ongoing Russia-Ukraine crisis? You mean, um, why is it that the peak was after the Second World War? Or uh, No, no, my question is that it was. it's generally observed that after a war period or maybe during an ongoing war, people's interest in world federalism increases and we have greater support. So is that happening this time also with the Russia-Ukraine crisis? Do we have more people who are interested in world federalism and uh, democratic uh, world government? Yeah, okay, I understand. I, I think we can observe that to a, to a certain degree. Uh, fortunately, it's not a world war um, uh, yet. Um, it could develop uh, into one. So we have to be very, uh, very careful. And I'm against um, this notion that we need a major crisis to make this happen. Of course, this is one possible scenario um, um, that a major crisis uh, creates uh, new institutions. Um, but I don't think it's the only one and it's certainly not my favorite one. I think we are human beings. Uh, we could do the right thing without bad things happening. Yeah, just because we we see it would be uh, a, a good development. So there are different scenarios: top down, bottom up. Um, um, our executive director in Democracy Without Borders, Andreas Bummel, uh, uh, wrote this book uh, about the world parliament and he describes different scenarios and the major crisis is just one of four uh, scenarios. I recommend uh, to, to read this, this book. I think uh, uh, it, it gives a very good uh, perspective on uh, possible scenarios. And, uh, and, and other aspects. So I think we should work um, uh, for um, global democracy and try to get it um, before very bad things happen. And I think that's possible. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree with that. And again, if, I'll, if I may put forward my opinion, it's not a world war that I fear because Currently, countries that are too intelligent to engage in world wars. I fear proxy wars and a series of wars like this. Like, I haven't seen a single decade after the World War II when we haven't had a military conflict. Every year, something or the other crops up and a lot of people are losing out their lives. So if you have a cumulative of the people who have lost their lives, the cumulative of the destruction of property and livelihoods, that would be like, uh, that would be a very uh, terrifying number. So... Again, we need to put an end to this for once and forever. We don't really need to wait for a world war to do something. Yeah, uh, of course we do not need, but we have to acknowledge that there is a certain risk at the moment. This can easily escalate. And as a negotiation uh, theorist, um, I, I think it's very dangerous if you are too hard or too soft as a politician in this crisis. Both can have very negative consequences. 
Um, so uh, it is really a tough challenge that uh, our politicians face at the moment to deal um, uh, with this crisis. Um, and on a, um, on a tactical level, I think so far, um, uh, their reaction is not so bad in preventing that escalation, but also um, uh, trying to stop bad developments. Um, I hope that we do not lose the long-term perspective uh, in this crisis, that we, we are united as, uh, if I speak for Western countries, uh, in, in, a, uh, uh, in a reaction, but that is not enough. Um, um, uh, crisis management is one thing, but a long-term perspective is even more important. And for me, um, global democracy is the long-term perspective. You you kindly mentioned my uh, uh, my uh, doctoral dissertation on the Kosovo War. I think that was a similar example in which it was important to do something. Um, and um, uh, I think some of the actions uh, could be justified as an exception uh, to protect human rights, but it was obviously not enough. Uh, uh, you need, in addition, an idea how the international system as a whole should develop and give countries and individuals an option to join that broader picture. Uh, and for me, that's uh, one of the challenges that we face as world federalists to develop concepts uh, in, in this direction. And for me, the world parliament experiment is one place where this should happen, that people come uh, <clears throat> forward and make proposals and discuss them uh, and to try it out uh, and even lobby. Um, uh, lobby uh, real life decision makers, as I describe in my discussion paper on United Humans. Indeed. How has your activism impacted you in the professional and personal sphere? Um, the, um, the, I try to combine that to a certain degree, uh, my professional life and, uh, and activism. So I spent uh, a lot of time for global democracy activities, but also simple economic work, consulting, um, uh, consulting clients. Um, and uh, for me, this is another reason why I, I really like to be an uh, intra entrepreneur and have my own company because it allows me to balance different aspects of my life, uh, 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 including family life and uh, um, uh, business and politics. Um, so um, I think that's also something that the time we are living in is, is a great time because in many countries, um, people have unlimited opportunities, right? If uh, I uh, lived uh, 100, uh, if I had lived uh, 100 or 200 years ago in Germany, um, it would be uh, uh, much more difficult to have that amount of freedom in my personal decisions. So we can try to use that uh, for uh, the better, um, uh, that, that freedom that we have. <laughs> Uh, the next question, this is actually based on a complaint that I've received from a lot of my friends and acquaintances. Uh, leaders of the movement in the current times uh, are found to be very intellectual and academic in their approach, which sometimes overwhelms people. Like a lot of people, they don't understand the true essence of federalism and leave aside federalism, they don't understand the true essence of democracy. So in that case, how do we simplify the idea of world federalism for the masses? Mm -hmm. I we we try to do that. Uh, for example, the slogan that I mentioned: "Global democracy is possible if you support it." Uh, I think this is the key that um, the masses understand that this is not a decision that is taken elsewhere. That uh, politicians or uh, big decision makers 
make for them, but it's your decision, the decision whether or not you join the World Parliament Experiment, for example, uh, will make it successful. If enough people say, yes, let's go for it, we organize this, it will be enormously uh, powerful. That does not solve all the problems, you still have to connect it to the real world, um, uh, and, and create a development. But the, the simple message is, uh, uh, it depends on you. Um, you are from India, you already quoted Nero. I, um, um, I always quote him as a negotiation advisor when he said all wars uh, end with negotiations. So why don't we start uh, with negotiations? Uh, but I also uh, like uh, to, to, to quote uh, Gandhi, who said, be the change you want to see in the world. So I think that's a very simple and powerful uh, message uh, that we can give if you want uh, a world federation, federation, if you want a world parliament, uh, to a certain degree, you should be the elector of that world parliament. Just go to the website uh, and elect people there. Uh, and it, it depends on you whether this happens or not. So that would be my approach to, uh, to, to give a counter argument to people feeling powerless. Uh, I often hear that People say, oh, we can't change. Um, we can't change things anyway. And I don't think that's true. I think you can uh, change it. I was honored to be the honorary advisor of, um, uh, um, of the world largest school in India, the, um, the Montessori School in Lucknow, um, because some of our friends in the global democracy movement are, are working uh, there. And I like very much that they say in their school, every child is potentially the light of the world. Uh, and I think, uh, that, that should be the, the motto that uh, uh, in, in our times, um, individual citizens will uh, decide the, the, the direction. And don't estimate uh, your, your power as an individual. That would be my main message. That was insightful. Uh, so going beyond, what do you think about uh, the role of Gary Davis in the movement? Uh, yeah, I admire Gary Davis very much for his uh, courage. Um, and I think in a certain sense, he's an example of what I just said, uh, we simply should do it. Uh, that does not mean I agree with everything uh, he did and said. Um, he was a very difficult person to work with him was extremely difficult and to argue uh, uh, with him. So I would not subscribe to, to, to everything, but the general example he gave to say that if we want to see this happening, um, uh, we need to do it ourselves. Um, I think it's not easy to uh, simply as he did to declare world government. And of course, many people thought this was ridiculous and they made jokes about it. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, to a certain degree, it is good to um, <clears throat> that he could stand that and he did it uh, uh, even though. So to a certain degree, I think he can be um, an example for uh, what we uh, what we should do um, to 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 be honest we also need to say uh, that uh, some things he did and said um, were also a bit too provocative and I would not um, uh, say that we should do a hundred percent do it a hundred percent in the way he did. Uh, but I'm, uh, at, uh, but I'm glad that he gave us an example what this movement um, uh, could accomplish. So I had difficult conversations with him. So we, uh, we agreed on uh, some aspects and uh, did not agree uh, uh, on others. Um, um, but uh, uh, the, the world is uh, uh, much better with this example than with, without it, in my opinion. I agree. Uh, English isn't the mother tongue of either of us and a lot more people in the world. So taking that into consideration, uh, would you support the establishment of an artificially created global language 
let's say esperanto or globasa as the language for global diplomacy me learning esperanto <laughs> no i am uh, trying to learn esperanto a little bit um, and i think it is a, a a very good idea however um i don't invest much of my time to learn esperanto because i think uh, um it would be more intelligent to um to, as a negotiation uh, consultant i would say we should have a negotiation i would say if 1 billion world citizens say they will learn esperanto uh, i will do it myself um so um i don't think um it helps a lot um if uh, different people start to learn um uh, uh, different languages um this can be uh, an organized process and if it is an organized process i'm in um i i think we should have uh, that that language um um i do not want to spend too much of my time uh, in the current state learning one of of these languages even though uh, i support it in general and i like it if people are doing it um we can organize it in a better way yeah, i think i agree with that as well and again it's like uh, it it's fatiguing when you go to start go out to start a new uh, start and learn a new language so that's something i have been facing as well i wanted to learn esperanto for a long period of time but then i sort of procrastinate and leave it <laughs> yeah the good thing is i once uh, had a in an ex- exhibition uh, the uh, the esperanto um, table was my neighbor and when we were waiting for people to come uh, the colleague told me you can learn esperanto in Uh, in 20 minutes uh, so i try to do that so now i have the knowledge of 20 minutes learning esperanto <laughs> uh, which is quite good but not sufficient <laughs> where do you see the movement for a world federation in the future yeah i hope it will play a central role because i think the world needs it uh but we have many challenges within our movement that i think uh we uh, we need to solve uh, we see this in the current uh, um, crisis in the ukraine very very different position uh, on that uh, we can even see it in projects uh, not everybody in our movement uh, thinks that it is important or even a good idea to participate in a world parliament experiment uh, for example uh, so we have some work to, um, to do to convince each other um uh, what is uh, the uh, a, 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 what is a um good way forward and i don't think that we need to focus on just one or a few projects it's good if there are several um uh, projects but um sometimes uh, we have to admit that we were not even a good example for the rest of the world within our movement um so and that's why i call the world parliament experiment an experiment because i think we need to do that experiment uh how can we organize ourselves and how good are the proposals uh uh we make um and if we do that in a in a good way i think the uh, global democracy movement or the world federalist movement uh will play an important and a good role uh in the future um and uh, i think the the future of the world uh, for the better or the worse um in a certain way depends on this question so it's it's an important task um that that our movement has um uh and but the more people join us and the the more they do it in a constructive way like you do it as a young world federalist uh, the more optimistic uh, we can uh, we can uh, be and i'm i i'm grateful um and uh, hopeful that we have this opportunity to 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 work together and i look forward to continuing this collaboration
Absolutely, and let's hope for the best. Uh, let's do our bit for the world, and let's hope other people join us in the course of time. Uh, mm-hmm. With that, how was the conversation? In your opinion, it was a very good conversation. Thank you very much, also for your preparation and for uh, in inviting me and touching um, uh, uh, touching uh, different aspects. Um, uh, I. Have to admit, I'm still struggling uh, with uh, the uh, uh, with the point when we discuss the situation in in Ukraine that even we, as two world federalists, um, find it so difficult to reach a common ground here. Um, but maybe that's also uh, that's also a good time that uh, that, that we are um, discussing uh, this and. Uh, uh, this would be an important point, I think, in in, in future uh, conversations. Um, that does not mean that I think we as world federalists should agree 100% on everything. It's okay to have uh, um, disagreements, um, uh, but I think it's also important that there is a core um, that that we can uh, uh, that, that we can agree. Um, and uh, also because you asked me about the future of the uh, world federalist movement, um, I think it will be important um, that we will find some kind of unity and of, uh, 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 of, of common ground in re- reacting to, uh, to these uh, crises. Um, so I, I think it's important that we uh, stay in contact and and continue this discussion. And in general, uh, I, as I said already, I really appreciate uh, your work and this series of interviews uh, that you are doing. So I encourage you uh, to continue that, your cur- curiosity, you are asking very good questions in my opinion, uh, and I wish you uh, the best of luck for your, for your personal uh, development. Uh, and also your contributions to our movement. Thank you very much. And uh, from my end as well, the interview was very enriching. And I would say the slight difference of opinion we had in between, that is a manifestation of a big tent approach. So we are basically a lot of people with different ideas, different economic and political ideologies. But at the end, we agree on one thing, that is uh, a global democratic federation. And that's what democracy is all about. So... uh, Mm -hmm. Again, if our morals are similar, if our uh, ways of uh, interpreting something is similar, then slight differences in how you exactly work on it and how you critically analyze it, that is bound to exist and we should welcome that. So uh, it's been a great honor to interview you, Dr. Rasmus Dinbergen. I look forward to working with you and uh, further association with the World Parliament Experiment. So we are expecting uh, our second iteration of the Model World Parliament sometime in July. So we could, I was planning if we could maybe somehow use the world parliament experiment to uh, introduce the participants to the idea and have their opinions over there. Also, uh, I would request all the viewers who are watching this video to uh, share the comments in the com- uh, to share their ideas and opinions in the comment section. We have a lot of ideas to be debated and discussed about, so we would l- like to know about that. Uh, If you like the video, please uh, click the like button, uh, subscribe the YouTube channel for further videos, uh, updates and further videos such as this and share it in your respective circles. With that, uh, I'll ask you for one last favor, Dr. Tenbergen, how to say goodbye in German. Auf Wiedersehen. (laughs) I couldn't quite get that, but... uh, That was Auf Wiedersehen. (laughs) Hope to see you again. (laughs) I know thank you is Danke in German. So Danke, Dr. Tenbergen. And uh, I'll be better prepared next time with the, uh, with the translation. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>